Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here. Now, we all love to play most likely the most iconic board game of all time, Monopoly. Well, love to play it can be questioned with others, but you've all definitely played it at one point in your life. Now, it might go on forever and ever and ever till it's gone on for over a week and you're so sick of it that you'd rather die than do anything else, but eventually the game stops with a winner who has conquered the entire board bankrupt everyone and gained everyone's properties. Now usually there's always that one person who is so successful every time they play that they just become really annoying and you're just like oh why do you always keep winning? Or it's between two remaining people who fight it out for the victory for hours but eventually one strikes gold. But this process of winning is quite slow and very very tactical. The winner would have been very strategic on how they could win. Maybe they were doing it in the background, gradually building up their empire without anyone realising. What if I were to tell you that there is someone like this, or rather a company like this in the world we live in today? Who we all love, all of us, and we all treasure. But while we're distracted by everything we love about them, they're secretly gaining more and more properties like a player on a Monopoly board. And now they're at the point where they're becoming a huge Monopoly. Today, we're going to be discussing how Disney became a Monopoly. Now we may love Disney so much and I can't blame you, this channel is literally built off Disney videos, but do you realise just how much Disney owns in the entertainment market? Because it's not just Disney movies, it's way, way, way more. So much so that it's kind of scary just how much they own, and let me tell you, they're not gonna stop. Before we go any further, let me just give you an idea of how big Disney is. Disney owns so much that people have even constructed a world map of Disney, where it has everything Disney owns on. To put it into perspective, this is every single Disney movie company Disney owns or is part of, and this is only the movie companies, not including other products. I'll go into more detail later, but the companies are Walt Disney Studios, Walt Disney Animation Studios, Disney Channel, Disney XD, Disney Junior, Marvel, Lucasfilm, which includes all of Star Wars, Pixar, ABC, ESPN, and that's 80% of that, Touchstone Pictures, 50% equity holding with Hearts Cooperation of A&E, the History Channel, again, 50% equity with Hearts Cooperation. Lifetimes, and again, 50% equity with Hearts Cooperation. Hollywood Records, Vice Media, which is 16% of, Maker Studios, International Media Networks, which they own or part own, such as ATV, RTL2, RDS, Tele5, Kividu, and now they've of course recently purchased Fox, which was probably one of the most strategic ideas they've ever had, which gives them Fox Family, Fox Animation, 20th Century Fox, Fox Searchlight Pictures, Fox 2000 Pictures, 20th Century Fox Television, FX Productions, Fox 21, FX Networks, National Geographic Partners, Fox Networkers, Groups International, Star India, Fox's interest in Hulu, which Disney already beforehand part owns, so basically Disney now owns nearly all of Hulu, Tato Sky, Endemol Shine Group shows. There are some of the other companies there with that might not be part of the whole movie idea, which is Earth Star Inc., which is basically the company that's helping them get their own plane company if they really wanted to. Synergy Group, venture capital firm Steve Moat Ventures, Core Publishing, and Fox's Television Creative Units. That is a scarily amount of movie companies to be a part of. And that's only a couple of them. There's still lots more things that they own, such as the theme parks and loads of other different companies that they're part of. It's really freaky to think about. Now considering there is only six major movie studios in the world which are 20th Century Fox, Warner Bros, Paramount Pictures, Columbia Pictures, Universal Pictures and Walt Disney Pictures. Now because Disney are extremely strategic, they bought out Fox and now own them. Meaning one third of all the movie companies on the planet is owned by Disney. That is extremely scary. That means if you were going to choose a movie, there would be a 33% chance that you were going to pick a movie that is Disney. It's terrifying to think about and it doesn't stop there. Disney is constantly trying to buy out more and more companies to go under their umbrella every single day. And slowly they're growing and growing and they're not going to stop because they're so big. In fact, 
I'm not going to be surprised if in a few years Disney buys another major studio like Fox. And then, well, it would be a very different world on TV. Disney would own 50% of all movie entertainment. I may love Disney and be like a huge fan, but I would definitely not want that to happen. Notice also that if Disney keeps buying companies, then it's less original content. The other movie studios mainly focus on original, fresh movie content. Disney, however, is the complete opposite. In recent years, Disney has only been focusing on sequels, prequels, and remakes. Think about it. All the main Disney films that have been coming out aren't originals. If you look at this list of the Disney movies that have came out since 2017, only 5 out of the 13 films released are originals. The rest are remakes, sequels, or prequels. And this list isn't including all the MCU movies and Star Wars movies, because they're all sequels and aren't part of the main Disney release, but it just shows how with Disney buying all these companies, the future is going to be filled with less original content and just reusing the same ideas. Even though so many people hate the remakes they've been doing, you're still going to go and see it because you want to know if it's as good as the original. Disney knows this and they know you're still going to go and see it because everyone loves Disney and it's kind of scary that everyone will just go purely because it's Disney. Like in this list here from 2017, the only movies that are original are Coco, Expedition China, A Wrinkle in Time, The Nutcracker and The Four Realms and Penguins. Apart from that, if we go down the list, we have Incredibles 2, a sequel, Christopher Robin, a remake, Ralph Breaks the Internet, a sequel, Mary Poppins Returns, a sequel, Dumbo, a remake, Aladdin, a remake, Toy Story 4, a sequel, The Lion King, a remake. It's scary, they're not bringing out any new and original fresh content, they're just bringing out remakes and sequels. And yeah, we may love the MCU, we may love Star Wars, we love them so much, but we also like new and original content. And yet, if Disney keeps on going, this is what we're going to get. Just remakes after remakes after remakes, sequels, prequels. And very soon, you're just going to be sick of it. You're just going to think, why aren't we getting anything so, so new? Now, Disney being greedy and wanting to own everything happens loads, as we've just discussed. In fact, just very recently, there was a huge situation that went on concerning Disney wanting more than they should get. And I'm sure everyone watching this video, even if you're not a fan, knows about it. That is the Sony Disney Spider-Man deal. Now, I know the internet went crazy and it's all being cleared up now, but I wouldn't be surprised if this happens again to Spider-Man or any other character because Disney likes to have everything. Because they're greedy, basically. They're just so, so greedy. Whether you were on Sony's side or Disney's side on this big deal, you have to admit Disney was very greedy. Sony wasn't being good either, but they weren't as bad as Disney. And this is coming from me, who was on Disney's side and wanted Spider-Man to stay in the MCU. I was going to do anything, I really want Spider-Man in the MCU. Then I started realising, Disney is being so, so greedy. The deal all started breaking apart just because of Disney's greedy nature. They came to Sony saying they want 50% of all the profit from the Spider-Man films. Bearing in mind, originally they were only getting 5%, which is still a lot of money to get from a character that you don't own. Now I agree Disney should deserve more because they create these brilliant new Spider-Man films that we love but either way it was Sony who allowed them to use their character in the first place. Sony didn't have to but they did and yet Disney is suddenly saying we have borrowed your property Spider-Man and now we want to own 50% of him not 5% because we can so we'll just take it. It's no wonder why Sony completely just turned them down straight away when they said that. Disney was just being greedy and not listening to what the fans wanted. Now all of that might have been cleared up, but Disney are still going to be greedy and try and get more stuff that isn't theirs. Not to mention they also have all the merchandise and toy sales, music, books, loads more and heck even theme parks. They're massive and now they're about to do something that will put them on top of everything else. They're about to release something that will make them a huge monopoly, and that is to introduce Disney to the world of streaming. Streaming is what everything is on today. Less and less people watch live television for an episode of something, or use DVDs or Blu-rays, or even go to the cinema. Because why would you? Streaming allows it all in one place, all the time. It's an incredible idea. Netflix was the first to go into streaming, and they're a huge success. Nothing could defeat them, no matter how many companies tried, BBC iPlayer, Amazon Prime, just to list a few. Netflix was always on top. 
with Netflix originals and showing other people's content. However, Disney on November 12th, 2019, and in some places it's already there, they're officially launching Disney Plus. And it is exactly what the name suggests. Disney Plus is every one of their company's content in the same place. It's huge. They're basically showing off what they've got. They're basically saying, oh yeah, we are this monopoly. And now you can see just how much we actually have. Now, this is a streaming service where everything Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, Fox, National Geographic is all going to be on it. Everything Disney is on here. Now, Netflix needs a competition. They've been at the top for too long. But Disney competing might not be the right choice, with Disney charging less for now and taking all Disney content off Netflix, they're predicted to crush Netflix. Netflix is going to lose all their Disney content and very soon may lose British content with ITV and BBC wanting to make a British streaming service. This could lead Netflix to having only their originals and a few other movies and shows, so nothing like what they have now. You may love Stranger Things, but compared to Star Wars and the MCU and Disney classics, so many people are going to transfer to Disney Plus and very soon Netflix will lose the top spot on the streaming market. Why wouldn't you want a streaming service that has everything Disney on it? Not to mention, once Netflix isn't as powerful, Disney is going to remain at the top. The only streaming service that might be able to compete is Amazon Prime, but they're already another scary monopoly. Disney, with Disney Plus, will get more money, buy more, and become an even bigger monopoly than they already are. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if it made you actually think really carefully about how scary this truth about Disney might actually be, if you did enjoy this video, then please make sure that you smash this like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It was a new thing that we're doing on the channel. If you do like it, make sure you tell us in the field section down below. And while you're down there, why don't you also tell us if you're kind of a bit freaked out by this. Like, did you realize Disney owned this much? And are you kind of worried about the future? Like, what if Disney keeps on buying things or do you not care? Do you just love how Disney's buying everything? Because everything's Disney and you're a major Disney fan. Tell us in the field section down below what you think. And as always, we've been here on Gative Theories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.